The most popular Bedrock server just released their Bed Wars game mode, and it's kinda difficult to win. But after playing a lot of games, I think I found the best strategy to win every game. Something I want to quickly go over is how you actually gain XP in Bed Wars. Kills give you 2 XP, Final Kills gives you an additional 13 XP, Destroying a bed gives you 15 XP, and winning gives you 40 XP. So the fastest way to actually get XP is final kills. As if you are playing squads for example, if you destroy a bed and kill everyone on that team, that's 75 XP. First of all, with the new generators and the different shop prices, the beginning of the games are usually a bit different. Each bed wars variant is also slightly different at the start, so I'll go through what to do for each variant. Let's start off with solos. So for the beginning of the game, the first thing you want to do is to buy 16 wool and rush the diamond generator. Then you go back to your base and upgrade your generator by interacting with the screen. This is so you can get gold as well as iron from your generator. Then I'd rush the team next to you. But what if the other team is also rushing? Well if it's at the start of the game, you might have to sumo them. If you win, I'd go straight for them. If there's a sword, try your hardest to knock them into the void. Once you're done that, you should have enough gold to get iron armor. Then after that, depending on the people in the game, I'd either rush through middle immediately, or I upgrade my generators to get more items and upgrade my defense and then I rush through middle. Now although maps like Library and Mushroom are more side rush heavy than more laid back maps like Oceanic or Tourist, with the slower games it would be better to go through middle anyway and then to any enemy base instead of from the side. You should also collect emeralds and put it in your ender chest so other people don't get them. Oh yeah, I'm gonna say this later in the video, but I'll say it right now. Buy planks instead of wool because it's technically cheaper. Duos are slightly more complicated because of the maps. Some of the new maps have different layouts, so you have to learn where everything is and the skill of the maps. But for the most part, it's similar to solos. Worldwood, for example, is more of a diagonal rushing map, while Amulet... Oh boy. Amulet probably takes the crown for the largest high map. You can barely see the team next to you and middle from your island. You'd rush diamond generator, go to base, upgrade your generator, and then rush the team next to you. Something I do is I try to steal their iron as much as possible by stalling them at their base so I could get as much blocks as possible early game. After that, I usually go to middle and try to push every other team. I would usually third party here. I would go for the team that looks more vulnerable, and then I clean up the other team. Now squads is pretty different compared to solos and duos because not only are the maps also different, but there's more people you have to cooperate with. But first of all, I think it's safe to understand the maps. First of all, there's two types of maps. It's good to know these two types of maps to know how games on these maps would play out. There's the rush heavy maps like Serrano, Pirates, Cyberspace, and Tropical, which you can side rush with just 32 blocks or less, and the distant maps like Rome, Ruins, that one season's map, and Hanging Gardens, which would require 64 blocks to rush, which you wouldn't rush usually and would go to each base through middle. If you're a more casual player, you may enjoy the more distant maps for the laid back gameplay. And if you're a more competitive player, you may enjoy the more rush heavy maps. But here's what I'll do for both of these types of maps. On the rush heavy maps like Serrano, Pirates, Tropical, and Cyberspace, I would combine the iron so you could side rush the team next to you. Then I would break the treasure, use dirt iron to get a sword, stall out the game slightly so you could buy blocks, and then side rush again. I'd also have someone with blocks and a sword follow me so they can also help me side rush. Now on the more distant maps, I would just chill out more. I would rush diamond generator and upgrade. Then I'd go to middle and collect diamonds to fully upgrade generators. In the meantime though, I would probably attempt rushing a team with blocks and a sword. Now squads actually isn't that party reliant unlike Hive Capture the Flag, so you could get away with not being in a party, but being in a party with good players would definitely help. Especially with those who you could cooperate with. Now aside for some genuine tips that applies to every Bed Wars game we play. Now first of all, obviously remember to make smart decisions. Like if you know that guy's good at the game, maybe you should get better stuff than them and also try avoiding them. Normalize using your ender chest. If you know you're about to die by someone, put everything in your ender chest to save your items. I'd also put any extra swords in your ender chest for emergency situations. Putting your items in your ender chest and voiding to get back to your base quicker is also a useful tool. Like if you know someone is about to be at your base, if you have time, throw everything in your ender chest and then just void so you can get to your base immediately. If you're ever in a situation where you can't make the parkour jump back from the diamond generator, learn how to jump and throw items back onto the bridge so the enemy team doesn't get them and so you can get them. You will have to be good at parkour to do this, but it's a good tip to know. If you know someone has an emo, buy a ton of enderpearls. 
because Hive decided to add another Nemo to the game, and their pearls are the only way to counter them, and I'll try pearling onto a structure instead of the side of the island. Most of the Bedwars maps are hard to clutch on because they're all shaped like this, but most of them also do have some sort of mage structure. Although something I would worry about is fall damage when pearling onto the structures. The Hive Bedwars actually introduces a new feature, team upgrades. Now these upgrades are pretty cool, but like... Get 3 emeralds and buy regeneration. This is genuinely the best team upgrade. It'll save you in so many fights, and a lot of people don't know about it. Okay, I know I said this before, but learn the planks method. After you've upgraded your generator at the start, it's actually better to use planks instead of wool because you get the same amount of gold and iron after upgrading and you get more blocks for purchasing planks. Buy Deep Slate. You can get Deep Slate within the first minute of the game with the diamonds, and you kinda need diamonds to get in, which if you pretty much control that diamond generator, then you're good. Fireballs? For the most part at least. Shred through blocks in the player's health. So destroy beds that you can't get in while pushing these guys off the defense. So you can destroy the bed is a good strat. You know, actually, while we're at it, practice blocking in. You won't need to use this all the time, but covering yourself in blocks like planks are stronger to mine into the bed defense is a good way to prevent yourself from being killed. And lastly, if you see these guys, it's pretty much over. So those are all of my simple tips for high bed wars, at least in season 1. Now click here to learn how to level up in some other Hive games.